Kevin Durant decided to take a blowtorch to his face yesterday. So what happened, Ethan? What specifically is he objecting to? Well, he did, he actually didn't uh, raise any specific objection, which was interesting. It was just he was mad uh, that the article existed. There was no part of it that he declared was untrue. He just objected to the idea that I wrote it, and he kind of went on a rant about media and about not doing media. I think what got lost in it is the context is that the Knicks trade goes down, and he just disappeared. Players are contractually obligated to do uh, sort of general presser media. I mean, I'm not a stickler. I don't care too much, but that is the contractual agreement, and he disappeared for a week. And it was concurrent with the Knicks opening up all this cap space with the Porzingis trade. And so, obviously, we're going to have to look into that. We're going to have to ask the Warriors about that. We're going to have to ask around if Kevin Durant has suddenly just made himself scarce out of nowhere with no precipitating event. And so I wrote about, you know, I wrote about it. I wrote about that there's a general expectation around the league that he's going to the Knicks, obviously things can change, as Brian Windhorst points out. You know, things can change between now and the summer. I know Stu Gatz wants more uh, definitiveness. Um, and he seemed to be very angry about all that, but it's, it's so odd because if it's just clearly not true, if it's clearly erroneous, then it would be a situation where he'd go, no, I'm, I'm coming back to the Warriors. What are you talking about? Ethan, right. I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say he controls this. Ethan's right. That's the point that's frustrating. He controls this if he wants to say, if he wants it to end, and he could simply say, hey, I'm staying right here. Yeah, yeah, you guys are used to the LeBron plan where LeBron goes, okay, um, I'm not going to answer questions about other teams. I'm going to answer questions about this team. That's what LeBron says in every contract year, and it's not a repeated grilling. I mean, he was, it was so strange. It was, uh, it was kind of out of nowhere because, look, I'm not saying that we're soft out here in the Bay, but we aren't, we aren't really bringing the heat. They've won a lot of games. They've won championships. We're not just badgering them. It's generally, oh, how does it feel to win so much? Oh, pretty good. Okay, okay. <laughs> you know, he, he, there would be months in between somebody asking him about free agency, so it was utterly bizarre um, to, uh, to take it in this direction. Were you thrilled that he called you out by name? I wasn't thrilled. It was yes, more just odd. No, it was just weird. Why do you ask the question if you're just going to immediately call the person answering it a liar? Well, like, I mean, I won't call him out if he answered it truthfully. I mean, that's all. I mean, who would be <laughs> thrilled if Kevin Durant said your name and you're in the middle of all this? Well, I think Stu Gotts might be projecting because I think we all know Stu Gotts would love it. I think that's what's happening right here. Yes, I'm assuming you're just like I me. would not love it. It's uncomfortable. I don't imagine yes. Ethan loves it even though he's trying to sell a book. He's about to – even selling a book and knowing that it's good for the sales of a book for him to have his name, your name in his mouth, uh, that doesn't feel good to you, right? Yeah, not, not really. Um, but you have to use it. And it, it's just another situation in the reputation management of one Kevin Durant where I'm effectively forced to talk about it more. <laughs> so, you know, that's the, whole, that's the whole ridiculousness of this is this, this thing that he's doing where the way he acts completely metastasizes the thing that he wants to go away, which makes you wonder if he really wants it to go away. And, you know, for as much as I know I'm a bad person and I'm a bad guy and I'm the bad guy here, but this is all of his making. I mean, this is something that he has effectively conjured out of nowhere on a team that looks like it might have the greatest starting lineup in the history of the NBA and has won 13 out of 14 games. Why is he saying that you don't talk to anybody when we know that you go in there and you're an exhaustive reporter? Um, I don't know, trying to get at the credibility, attack the credibility. I mean, it's a situation where I think you're always in a losing battle where you try to assert your own credibility. You just sound like a douche. You know, like, well, I talk to so many people, and, oh, I'm the most credible, and blah, blah, blah. It's just, you know what, if something's untrue, let me know about that, and, you know, we can compare notes and see about it, but I'm not really going to go down that road of, like, no, I'm great. It just seems foolish to me. Ethan, how hurt do you think Kevin is over the fact he didn't expect this? There's no way that he's won these championships, been great in the finals, yet it hasn't been validated by the media. It just hasn't been. Like, they acknowledge he won the championship, but they don't validate how great of a player he actually is. I can sympathize with him on that. You know, he might have thought that those were the rules, that you are the greatest player on a team, you get finals MVP, you know, when LeBron uh, won the finals against Kevin Durant, we said LeBron is the greatest player in the NBA, and I think when he went up against LeBron, and I do believe he outplayed LeBron, uh, at, at least in the first finals, where LeBron wasn't really there, wasn't really there defensively, um, I think he thought that there would be a, a changing of the guard, and it just never happened. And remember, he said in 2013 that he was tired of being in second place. It's been a long time since 2013.
What's his problem? Is it that or something else? I mean, I can't really – you wouldn't want to psychoanalyze too much on that. Uh, I think generally – it's a problem that a lot of guys might have. Where uh, what's that? That Browning poem that the the reach must exceed a man's grasp, yeah, right? Yep, where yep. they all have that they all have that inclination, and we're seeing that around the league. I mean, have we ever seen more unhappy superstars? Have we ever seen more superstars with one foot out the door? It might have something to do with the social media era, where yeah, you can talk directly to the fans, but the downside is. is they can talk directly back to you, and you have just a steady stream of the opposite of validation. And right now, I mean, just look at the situation around the NBA. You've got Jimmy Butler. You know, is he going to stay? You've got the aforementioned KD. You've got Anthony Davis trying to get out. You've got Kyrie Irving with one foot out the door. I'm probably missing a few guys. It's never been like this, and it seems like it's not just KD. Ethan Strauss with us. You should check out uh, his work at The Athletic. When is the book coming out? Uh, the book is going to come out in 2020, so it's going to be it's going to be a little while. But you know, just stay tuned. I think it will be. Uh, I think it'll be good. I'm certainly getting some material right now, and more importantly, some publicity. Also, I want to give a shout out to the podcast that I did with Amin El Hassan, Warriors Wednesday. You know, Amin. It, it, it kind of presaged and predicted this whole thing unfolding as it did. Uh, how so? Uh, just the themes that we talked about. I mean, we talked for over an hour and a half. And you know, you know, Amin. You know, Amin came. You know, he came with it. I just thought you would let me plug. I didn't expect a follow up, Dan. I didn't expect to add context to my plug. But if you're plugging it, I'd like to know what's over there so people don't actually have to go listen to it. Oh, yeah. Okay, I see that play. I see that. It's just hard to synthesize an hour and a half down to uh, down to a few bullet points. But we basically said that this was going to happen, that I was going to come in there and something like this is going to happen. It's fairly predictable with Kevin Durant. 